Hey guys, this is Joe with Modders Inc. And today we're going to be looking at the Mayhem's Blitz Pro Kit. Uh, we'll be using a Black Ice Nemesis 240 GTS, that's their stealth model radiator. Um, initially, I didn't think I was going to show you how the kit actually worked. I was just going to talk about it after some personal um, use. I've, I used it on a few radiators we did a while back for a review video and just never got around to actually showing the methods on how it was used so the um, whole reason I get to do this is one of my friends who will remain nameless decided to pour vinegar concentrated vinegar at that into his water cooling loop for those of you who don't know vinegar has a pH of about a 2 to 2.5 it's very acidic it's very strong and it'll actually start damaging some components he already had other components that were damaged he had some radiators that had leaks in them took him to a shop, the shop patched him up by blocking most of his channels, which in turn over the past three to four months, it killed two of his pumps. So he, uh, he called me over, explained me what happened. We took his rig apart and I was like, look, you gotta get new radiators. Um, he's, his other one's already been done. So we're gonna be looking at this one and uh, I'll show you how to get everything set up with the Blitz kit. The first thing I want to do is give a big thank you to performancepcs.com. You can see their sticker as well as their website name on the bottom. Website is performance-pcs.com. Performance uh, I got everything in this video from them with the exception of the obviously used shop towel, the distilled water, and the glass Pyrex, which I don't even know if you might be able to get those on the site. But uh, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing about this kit is you definitely want to make sure that you have proper protection and not that kind of protection, pervert. Um, what I mean by that is gloves and as you can see on my funny looking face, the proper eyewear. Um, it does get fogged up. I'm in Texas, it's very humid. So let's kind of take a look at the kit itself. Now I've already opened this one up. I do have another kit, so you'll see another pair of goggles and gloves. So this is actually usually buried at the bottom, but it's an instruction manual. And you want to read your instruction manual because every kit is different from the next. And what I mean is there's different formulas. So one kit might say use 125 milliliters. The other one might say 250 milliliters. Just read this. As you see, the first thing on this uh, paper is warning. It lets you know what's what's in what's in the chemicals themselves. You have two chemicals, which we'll go over in a bit. And the big one, which I really like, uh, Mick over at Mayhem's is it's his number one goal to make sure you're using the product safely. And he says, be responsible. Never leave these chemicals unattended in the reach of children and or animals. They are poisonous. They are toxic. Uh, this last thing you want is having to call poison control. So this is the, the chemical we will be dealing with in the first part of the video. It is the uh, Blitz Part 1. Blitz Part 1 is a very heavy acid and what it's used for is to clean the radiators. You need to have the radiators completely separate from the system when you're doing this uh, because this will eat away at O-rings, it'll damage plastics, it'll destroy your tubing, especially soft tubing. Haven't really tested with PTG yet, but it, it may have a similar effect. Now, as you see, I'm wearing these blue gloves. Uh, they include several pairs with the kit, so there's no reason for you not to wear these. They even flat out say on the front of the instruction manual that part one contains phosphoric acid at 0.01%, and this can burn your skin undiluted for a long period of time. Now we'll go over this in a bit. We want to get over the safety stuff first. Comes with a pair of goggles. Mick actually did just uh, upgrade the kit, so it's got some breathing holes. The ones I have on now um, don't have the breathing holes on top, so that's why they're fogging up a little more. Now we have measuring cup, so you can actually measure your part two, part one. Here's the part two. Part two is actually the neutralizer. 
and we'll go over this a little later in the video. Um, it's basically used to counteract the effects that may still be lingering in the radiator after you've used part one. And we have an electronic pH kit. Now there are two kits. There's the Blitz kit and uh, the Blitz kit Pro. Now the smaller one doesn't come with this. It comes with litmus papers, which they're just pH papers. You just dip them in and it gives you a color code and that's how you tell what the pH of your system is. But for right now, we will just worry about the whoop, keep the instructions handy. I've already read them. I've actually already gone through and filled up the water. Now, don't be like me and try to do math that you don't have to do. I have a much bigger uh, Pyrex glass that I used to mix in. Um, it broke, so I'm using the 500 milliliter. So this is 250 milliliters. It says mix. 250 milliliters to 500 uh, to uh, 750 milliliters of distilled water, preferably distilled. Uh, he does have some pure H2O. It, it is a bit expensive, so you may not want to use that. You can't really beat um, like an 80, 90 cent jug of water, of distilled water. This is 250 milliliters. So when it says uh, mix it to that ratio, if you have a thousand uh, milliliter uh, glass, Pyrex, or other uh, container, just pour this whole thing in there. Pour the 750 milliliters. It'll save you a lot of headache. Um, I spent a good 10 minutes, unfortunately, trying to figure it out and uh, then realize, oh wait, there are easier methods. This is child safety cap. So is the other one. So you have to press down and open. Keep in mind, I am still wearing the gloves because I don't want this on my skin. So I've already actually mixed this, and since I've already read the instructions, I'll keep them handy, but I'll put them over here. So as you can see, I already have my Pyrex filled up. It's to the, it's to the 500 milliliter mark on this one because it is half the size. Now, what's recommended, this is what I do. Um, I use this little, it's, it's just a fill, a little uh, funnel. I got this one from, uh, I believe Alpha Cool makes it. You can get it on performance PCs and it just makes it so much easier than uh, obviously you have greater surface area to hit. Keep in mind you can't just dump the whole thing in there. It's going to start backing up and make sure on this one it does come with a little relief tube and what that does is just kind of uh, burp some of the air out as you're pouring. So um, some of y'all might be wondering what is this? This random jug of water. As you can see, even with the solution mixed in, the water's pretty clear. This is actually discharged from another radiator that I cleaned using the same formula. You can see all the gunk and contamination that came out. I mean, this is, it's not Kool-Aid, don't drink this. Um, you'll probably uh, hear colors if you do. And I just wanted to keep this by to show you how well the kit actually performs. It actually is getting rid of a lot of that rust, um, a lot of the algae buildup. I mean, radiators are not exactly the, they're not made in the cleanest of environments. And my experience, Black Ice is one of the cleaner brands. Um, I'd, have to, I'd probably have to say Alpha Cool is one of the, they're not as clean. I don't want to say they're bad radiators. They're actually very good radiators, but... I wish they would step up the quality control instead of me having to blow out chunks and chunks of debris from the radiators. So let's go ahead and get started on this. And we're actually going to have this filling up slowly. Hopefully I don't drip. And you want to watch the other hole. On this black ice, there's only one end fill, or one, one input, one output. So you don't have to really worry too much. Just make sure that all the other holes are capped. You do want to keep your eye on this one, because what will happen eventually is you'll start seeing it flow through the other side. And you don't want to see it bubble out, of course. It would probably be smart if I did this on the top. See, there we go. So 
We're going to stop right there. We're going to clean this up. And now what we're going to do is what would have been smart of me to do in the first place is we're going to put this on the towel. I'm really not too worried that this got wet. It's just foam board. It cost me all of like a dollar at local Walmart. So what you're going to do is you're going to burp the radiator and you're going to get the air that's trapped at the bottom out. So as you move this up, you can hear it kind of grunging around. Just kind of move it side to side. You will have some air bubbles trapped in there. Now the water level did go down a little bit because it was getting some air bubbles out. I'm still going to move it around just a wee bit. Pop that air bubble. But it looks like we are good as far as the fill level. So now we're going to get rid of this. As you can see, that made it significantly easier. You can, I'm not sure how well the camera's picking it up, but the water's right underneath the brass inserts. So from here, um, they do recommend you cap it off. So if you have some spare fittings laying around, feel free to plug up the holes and give it, give it a bit of a shake. I won't do that because the camera's gonna freak out and probably knock it over, but um, I'll actually do that off camera. So we're going to let this sit for 12 hours. And during that 12 hours, all the buildup that's inside this radiator is going to start dissolving. It's going to start releasing. One of the problems people have when they don't do this is the radiator might be fine. Nothing's coming out. But as your system gets hot and cold, hot and cold, just like you would use hot water to remove a stubborn stain or some gunk, that gunk starts releasing from the rads and starts going into your water cooling system. I had this happen to me personally. Um, I didn't used to do this. Um, this is necessary when it comes to water cooling. If you don't want to take these steps, my advice, stick with the all-in-one coolers or use fans. Uh, the water cooling is a science. There are precautions you have to take. Don't take shortcuts because you think your system is going to be fine. To be honest, I have not found a radiator yet that comes out of box that is clean, that clean as a whistle and you can use it straight out of the box. All radiators do require some prep and priming. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for the 12 hours and I'm actually going to see if the discharge that comes out of this radiator is anywhere near as bad as the one that came out of the other one. So uh, stay tuned for part two of the video. Um, we'll be putting that up probably later on during the week. If not, um, little sooner really it's going to be shot tomorrow I have to let this of course the process take effect for the full 12 hours and um, part two will be the part B of the mixture which neutralizes this and we'll be installing this into the system thanks for tuning in guys have a good one wasn't that a great video I know you liked it so go ahead and subscribe to our channel and after you do that go over to Modern Zinc and check out some of our reviews our how-to guides and also our forums so please check us out.